From SelenaZito.com is the one and only Selena Zito. Welcome to the uh, program, Selena. How are you? Good morning, Ben. <laughs> you uh, looks like you uh, <laughs> called it again. <laughs> well, I think the the thing is, is if you're trying to understand an election and you're trying to understand a sort of sentiments and how uh, and how granular um, voting can be and personal for. For, for people is to literally go to them and listen to them, mm-hmm. listen to what they're talking about. They may not always tell you who they're voting for, but they will tell you what issues are important to them. And if you understand human behavior, you can start to understand that when something is changing. So it was a very good night uh, last night for anyone other than progressive socialists. Um, Even in even in San Francisco and Seattle, uh, the socialists did poorly. Uh, And then there were then there were things like the the truck driver who had just had enough in New Jersey spent less than two hundred dollars on his campaign and looks like he just beat the state Senate president, a Democrat. I know. I mean, that's fantastic. What a great story. Yeah. His name yeah, is Edward Durr. Yeah, absolutely. Look, if you strike a chord with voters, if you understand what their concerns are, if you are deeply rooted to the community as they are, you are going to capture their uh, um, their imagination. In people that are successful in governing are people that are aspirational, people who are able to make um, people believe they are part of something bigger than themselves. And that, if you listen to Glenn Youngkin, if you listen to Jason Mayares, and if you listen to the House of Delegate candidates that were conservatives, they all had that message in various different ways. They understood the people and what the people wanted and what the people were longing for. And and that is that is what I wrote about in in my book, The Great Revolt. I I looked at these sort of different um, coalition or, or or different archetypes of voters who really didn't have a lot in common, um, except their rootedness to community and their sort of um, unhappiness with our cultural curators. Um, who run our businesses, our sports entities, our institutions, academia, and Hollywood. And and that that sense of not being respected by those institutions is what drew them together. That aspiration was incredibly important in this election. And, and I think that the Democrats really failed because they don't know how to run unless Trump is on the ticket. It was never about Donald Trump. Uh, Voters, whether you loved him or liked him or hated him, he was they have moved on. Voters don't act in the way um, of looking through the rearview mirror. They're always forward looking, especially in local elections, because the the roads, the bridges, education, taxation, inflation. Uh, and economic development are constantly on their minds. And that's sort of what people miss. And I, I want to also point out to your listeners, one of the other, two of the other sort of interesting races for Democrats was the uh, race for mayor of Buffalo. Were you mm-hmm. familiar with that? Yes, uh, yes. And the, and the referendum on policing mm-hmm. in, in Minneapolis. All these strident uh, or woke sort of, um, platforms and, and positions failed miserably because people want police to protect them. They don't want a socialist to uh, to uh, run their city because mayors are supposed to be good managers. They're not supposed to be ideologues. And 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 so you know, and and Democrats and the media really failed to grasp. Um, what voters were so displeased with. And, and they focused too much on Trump, and they focused too much on, on every time someone said something they didn't like, th- that person was a racist. 
I mean, people just get tired of that. So the, the is this a rejection? I mean, I, I'm 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 trying to put together all of the the pieces, and I think there's lots of reasons, and you've named most of them. Um, but there is a there is this feeling that the left is elitist. They have their own language. And most of the times they're talking, you know, it's Latinx. It's Latinx. Nobody says Latinx except, oh, I mean. I how you say that. I didn't even know how you said it. I just looked at it and was like, I don't know what that word is. Yeah, it's Latinx, <laughs> uh, and, and which I think is so New Jersey. It Doesn't it sound like Tony Soprano? Hey, I got a Latinx over here, you know. Um, but, but uh, you know, they have their own language, and I think it is off-putting to a lot of people, they they just feel this elitism coming at, at them. Uh, is it is it this plus the agenda that we've seen in Washington? You know, plus the economy. What, what is the what does it say? Let's start here. What does it say about Joe Biden? Anything here? Yes. Here's the. If you want one word to describe this election cycle. I would use the word overreach. And and it is an overreach on policy. It's an overreach on elitism. It's an overreach in believing that you were sent to Washington um, and with a mandate, and you certainly weren't because you barely won. You don't have a majority in the Senate, and you barely have a majority in the House. Everything is about overreach. Same, and I would add on overreach on COVID, overreach on mandates, yes. overreach on on name everything anything, yeah it's overreach that Correct. is the best word and voters always want to either put a, the brakes on that or correct it if they're putting the brakes on it then you will only see it in a handful of elections because democrats will then get the message but if they want to correct it that means you have new people in the conservative coalition i would argue that is the direction that this is going because of the influx of blue collar uh, voters into the conservative movement. Yes. Um, that aren't just white, they're black, they're Hispanic, they're Asian. I mean, they, they, they lost a lot of their black and Hispanic vote in Virginia. I mean, that should be Absolutely. very concerning to the Democrats. But, you know, I have been punishing myself all morning and listening and watching on social media, but also on MSNBC and CNN, watching the reaction and their their belief as to what went wrong. And I'm just, I shouldn't be stunned, but I'm stunned oh, I, it, that they think, that, it, yeah, they think, well, if only we would have passed it $3 trillion. I'm like, no, no voter wanted that. Voters wanted a regular sort of in good infrastructure bill that, that, that keeps the roads, roads and bridges um, and creates more broadband. That's what voters want, and also to keep their water clean. They do not want social engineering and, 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 and environmental justice and criminal justice and free everything. Voters never voted for that. Okay, so you're a, you're, you're a student of, of history enough to be able to, I think, answer this uh, with some backing. Uh, in, in 1919, this is the mood. What we're feeling right now, I think, is yeah. the mood that was happening in 1919. Wilson went crazy and overreach yeah. like crazy. But what he did is when people started rejecting him, he said, I got to go out on the road. I've got to, they're just too stupid to get it. I haven't made enough speeches for them to get it. I think that's what they're going to do uh, this time around, which led to 10 years of the Republicans and the progressives being banished until they cloaked themselves again uh, and, and shuffled things up. It, are are they going to go stronger? Are they going to cloak themselves? What do you think's coming? They're too arrogant to cloak themselves. Yeah, so they too. do not believe that they are at fault for this happening. They do believe the voters are stupid. Uh, the same voters that they praised in 2020 have now become the the the, the voters of stupid, and that's sort of uh, the big um, hurdle that they uh, they have shown no 
um, willingness to try to tackle. So they're just going to double down. They're going to go out and scold voters about not knowing, not understanding, not uh, um, believing that they know better and they're going to fix their lives. People don't want their lives fixed. They want to be able to achieve whatever they want to achieve on their own. They want that sense of earning the next step, earning the next um, um, milestone that they are able to achieve. And even they also want to learn how to fail. You know, that's an innate thing in, in, in the American DNA that the Democrats have been trying to squash for the past 12 years. So here's what's frightening about all of this. They become more and more arrogant and they are so <laughs> self-isolated that they convince each other that they are right and that everybody else is stupid. And this is a group of people where you've got the president saying, my patience is wearing thin. This is a group of people that will begin to really punish, not just scold, but to find ways to really punish people. Yeah, well, in, in that effort, they are going to lose constituencies that they never should lose, you know, on paper. Uh, people are not, you know, I, I called this cycle way back in January, two days after uh, um, uh, Biden was sworn in and just started eliminating people's jobs on the pipeline. Yep. I said, there is going to be a great awakening. Here's what people missed in 2020. While everyone focused on the Democrats' wins, slim as they were, they missed the red wave that had already started down ballot. People just in Pennsylvania alone rejected wokeness in, in, and, Dem and Republicans won in state Senate seats in places that sh have been reliably, reliably Democrat for decades. And no one paid attention to those results. But I understood that this sort of great awakening was already in flux. It, was, it, it started to sort of poke up during the um, during the first few days after the inauguration. But I will tell you the most pivotal thing that happened um, for Democrats, and, and I don't think people understand this, is how uh, is Afghanistan. And we talked about yeah. this yesterday. That that changed that everything. Negligence, that negligence. And that is the key word that negligence. Is, is what made people stop and say, wait, what? This is not what I bought into. I did want us to be out of Afghanistan. However, I did not want it at the, at the, at the cost of people's lives. I did not want it as the cost of, of our reputation. And, 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 uh, and, and people saw through the lies and are just continuing to yeah. see through the lies on this issue. All right, I've, I've only got 30 seconds. Is the... Are these two bills waiting in Congress? Are they going to be jammed through, or do you see the the sane Democrats say, "I am no way, no way, am I getting on board with that"? See, I have always thought that this second bill wasn't going to pass, um, and I, I still think that it's not going to. I think the infrastructure, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, does pass, and I think that's the end of that. Hmm. That is, that's huge. That is huge. Uh, Selena, thank you so much for talking to us. You, you can follow her writing. She is really good. She's great with historic perspective as well, if you're not familiar with her. SelenaZito.com. SelenaZito.com. Thanks, Selena.